So this is what we did last week. So we went through these little journals, all of them, some of them were taped, some of them were not. So I was looking at them this morning and trying to think about what I wanted to do. And I actually painted this flower. I pulled out a piece of old wallpaper because I have a little box in my studio that is, I'll show you. I just keep a little box of some items. And then sometimes I go back, I have plastic bins in my basement with like three or four of them that have all my vintage papers and some torn apart books. And so I'll just go through them and then kind of fill up a little um, box to keep in my studio. And that's what I play with. And that way I'm not like overly distracted with what I'm gonna use. Oh, sorry about that. So I pulled out this little piece of paper this morning and I just um, painted a little flower. It was very loose and kind of relaxed and did that. And that kind of made me think about what I wanted to do for this. So I looked through these journals and I decided that I would use this one, okay? So what I think I'm gonna do is, I wonder if I turn the light off. There we go, I think it's better. I can make sure you can see. Okay. So you can turn this, I was turning it different ways. I'm not worried about the actual direction I made it or the, the way it is in the book. I'm just looking at different ways that I can make this. So I think I created it this way, but I want you to not think about how it's been composed. I want you to look at it, turn it around and see what you like about this background. Okay. And so I feel like it's more weighted over here. So I have this little drawing and it's on a piece of vintage paper. You can see that it has like paint on it and everything. And um, it has clear gesso on it, it's just charcoal. So I took, I pulled her out, I painted this flower, and then I have some of these Neo2 crayons, a few of those, and I'm gonna try something. I have this, it's very cool. I went through my pens and I wanted to use something I haven't used in a long time. And it's a Pitt Artist Pen, it's a big brush, and here I'll draw on this for you. It's like a little brush, like a nib, and then you can just, and it's look, it's paint. So I'm gonna use that. And then I think a few weeks ago, I talked about um, the book, The Gift, that Jean Oliver gave us when we went to her Poets and Misfits workshop. And the storyteller, it's Morgan Harper Nichols. And I found, the first thing I did, while I was having my coffee, before I started painting, was I kind of went like this in the book and I opened it up to this little poem. And the poem's called, For Amy, Living in a Country Far From Home. All this time she is learning to see she is so much stronger than she thought she would be. And I just thought that was very beautiful and it kind of made me visualize this woman, Amy, living far from home in a different country. So I went rifling through my things and I had this this is gonna be Amy. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut her out. Maybe I'll cut her out on this side, kind of like a little paper doll. So I had just put some clear gesso, I think, on this. And quite often I will, you know, just sketch quick little portraits and just for practice and everything. <clears throat> kind of round this over. All right, and then I think maybe, maybe I'll tear this and see if I like how it feels when I tear it. Sometimes tearing it is, helps us move past it being so perfect. Okay. And when you create like little sketches, then they don't become so precious and you can reuse them. You can also make a copy of your artwork. Okay, her head's a little wonky, but we're gonna play with that. All right, so maybe she goes there. And I think what I'm gonna do is I was playing with, I was playing with this pen, 
while having my coffee. And I drew these flowers. And I think what I'm gonna do is draw them directly on here, live. <laughs> so now you could, um, I'm gonna copy my drawing. So I'm not even looking at a real flower. So these are just some scribbly flowers I drew. drew. So you could go in and, so we don't know what country she's in. And so maybe there's, she's a, there's a lot of flowers where she is. So you could go in with your pencil and draw it, but I'm going to throw caution to the wind, which this is a great exercise. So it's in your journal. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can mess it up, it's okay. So I'm just gonna look at some of these flowers and I'm just going to loosely kind of roll it around and how I like to create, just make some petals. All right, so I have this kind of bold black, which I like. So it's a bit more graphic. And this is a great way to loosen up. It doesn't have to look exactly like a flower. I'll put a little leaf there. All right, then maybe I'll put another one up here. Let's look at this. So one technique to kind of help your style development, your voice as an artist, is to draw things. You know, use your reference image, whatever it is, you know, find some flowers in life, draw those, but then put it away and just draw as you see it. And the more you draw it over and over, then it starts becoming more of yours. Like I didn't look at anything, I just drew her. And I've drawn faces for so long that I can now just draw. I, re I really like using a reference photo because I feel like I can get, you know, it's more challenging and it really helps with my technique as an artist. But sometimes I like to just play around and sketch. So let's see, what about this flower here? So, and I can take these and collage them into um, another journal page. So all the little things you make, all the sketches, you can repurpose them and start creating new compositions and get some ideas like this could lead you to a final piece of art because you're using your ideas. I'm using this poem. The poem can be written in there somewhere. Um, Okay, so I can keep going up. What if I just do like a little bud here? Okay, so I think I'll stop there. Where's my lid? All right, the next thing I thought about doing was I wanted to add some stitching and I threaded this already. So I pulled out the colors that I've been using lately and decided on this green. I kind of like this. Oh, great. I've got a snarl. It wouldn't be Facebook Live if I didn't have something happened. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So she, I kind of started a little flower here. So I'm just going to put a little stitching in here. And I like stitching in paper. I've done this before. A lot of artists do this, add stitching to their work. And I was kind of getting the idea from that journal I made with the stitching and thought I would bring it into this little piece here. And this is something you can draw your picture. You can um, then sit down and watch TV and do a little stitching and make this, you know, even more elaborate. Um, when I worked on my, this journal cover, you know, I sat down, it took me a long time. You know, I spent a lot of time with the stitching and getting it thick in here and thin in there. So it's not something to rush through. And 
you know, I, I think it's so easy in our world today just to try to do something and rush through it when if you take time and be intentional about your artwork, it's what you're giving to your art and you're giving your art time, time to grow, time for the ideas to form in your mind, time for you to um, just be with it and allow it to turn into what it needs to be. Because it doesn't happen fast, it's not. And it's gonna evolve. My art will continue to evolve over time as will yours. All right, so I'm just gonna stop there for right now. And then the other thing, I just love this. So I think I'm going to do something with it. So I'm going to cut it out. But I really like, I'm going to try and save some of this because I might use it in another collage. So I'm going to cut it out a little bit. And when you're doing, if you have like leftover paint on your palette, just get a piece of scrap paper and just paint either a little face or flowers or whatever it is. It could be a bird. And it's when you're very loose is when, um, and you're warmed up is when you get things, cool things happen. Like I really like how this happened and I just played around with it. All right, let's see how this works on Amy here. He's living in another country. And then I like, really like how these little leaves turned out with these little blobs of paint. Okay. Right. Put that over here. All right, Amy, what do you need? Does she have there? Oh. I don't know, I kind of like that, but I don't like this thing hanging out. So then it kind of brings it forward, but it is kind of cute here. All right, but I have to fix this leaf. This is too pointy off the top of her head. All right, it's kind of cute. All right, so now I have my trusty yes paste here. I'll try not to make too big of a mess. I'm just gonna use a little bit. You can use your matte medium. We're gonna think about this as Amy's ideas, just kind of blooming her thoughts and her and where she's living. These are all beautiful thoughts and in her head. Okay, so I can go back and fix this if they don't. I do it like this. Okay. And I'm gonna, I took the poem, I wrote it out in this green colored pencil, which I think I'm actually going to write it out maybe in here. So I'm just gonna turn it and maybe have it in here. So, so I'm gonna write it in script, all connected. time she is learning to see she is so much stronger than she thought she'd be Is 
Morgan, so I remember, Harper Nichols. Morgan Harper Nichols, okay. So I've written in there. I mean, this could lead me to some kind of painting as, at some point. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I just wanna bring in a little bit more watercolor and let's see. I'm gonna use this kind of indigo blue here and just kind of move it around and what I already have to add another layer of paint. Let it move through the painting. Oh, it looks pretty. Now I have some Neo 2. These are the water soluble ones. So I think I'm just going to go through and add a little bit of line work and mark making. What else do I have here? With this olive green. You see that? Let's see. This color is pretty. It's, um, what is it? I think it's turquoise. It's a turquoise. Just to have something kind of fun in here. Let me add a little burnt sienna in there. I have it over here. Okay. All right. Got a little mess going. And I am feeling pretty good about it. Let's just put a little wash over here. Maybe add a little green. You could also do this in white if you wanted to, if you wanted a white pen and write on top of this. And then this is kind of a weird white space here. So I need to kind of think about what I'm doing here and maybe it needs to come into her blouse a little. do I want to do? So I have this raw, um, I think it's raw sienna. I'm just going to add a little color here on one side of her face. This is just a pastel pencil. Because I had clear gesso on here, I actually kind of watered it down a little bit. Um, so it's just a thin coat. When I drew it, I drew it on the plain paper, on this piece of vintage paper that I found in my little stash. And then I sprayed it with a fixative. And then I took a thin coat and um, added the gesso to it. All right, so I think that's it. There's my journal page on my background we did last week, and I can always keep, you know, playing with this and adding more things to it and if I want to. But then when I look at this, I can take this and take a section of it, you know, what I really like. So what I really like is I like her, and I like this part right here. And 
I could use this as a jumping off point right here at, for a, a, an abstract. The colors that I use, the way I did the marks, the looseness, and it could end up being that. So think about that when you go through your journal and I wanna go through the other ones here and just show you, I don't have like a little viewfinder, but if you're interested in doing abstracts, sometimes it, it's hard to start, like you don't know what to, where to start, what to do, but you can take work you've done, where's find this one, and just look at it, like I really like this section, and I know, I remember I used that Hake brush or Hake brush, and I like the way those colors move together and the little marks. Um, what else do I have here? I love this. I think this is cool. I think this is cool. So you could do like a big spread and then find a viewfinder, viewfinder and cut it out. That's always a fun thing to do with your um, abstracts, but working them through in an art journal first or sketchbook and doing a lot of them will give you the, um, it warms you up and it also gives you ideas and it takes away that fear factor of getting started when you've pulled out all your supplies and you're going, your intention is to make an abstract or draw a portrait, but it's easier to get warmed up and create something um, first in your art journal. So what I used were Neo2 color, the water soluble. I used burnt sienna, I think olive green and this turquoise blue. I used this Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen, the big brush. And I used my favorite pastel pencils. They're Car uh, Stabilo pastel pencil. This is a raw sienna. And this is kind of a mixture um, of Daniel Smith watercolors and um, wild thorn. And then of course the yes paste, I use that too. I think that's everything. Um, okay, I'm gonna flip it around and see if you have any questions. Let's try this here. Enjoy today's little journal and um, next week I won't be here. Just a reminder because I'm going on vacation. <laughs> so I'll be out of town next week, but I'll be back the week after that. So thank you for joining me. I love you guys. You're the best. You're awesome. Bye. It's not turning off. <laughs>